Welcome back to the second game. It's Nuriki. It's Thirsty. We have a lot to talk about. That's why we're going to jump straight up into Champion Select. Let's go. Nuriki are not allowed to lose anymore. FGG Rail taking off the yeah, right away. immediately, and they pay the respect. It, you know, I got I respect they do it immediately. It's not right. like it's a like like third one. one. Yeah, not of that. Um, yeah. Good evening, NLC. It's hot, damn hot. We're coming in very hot. And there's the Hecarim as well. Just get rid of that from Viking, who's been really, really, really good on the champion. And Hecarim has been rising super high in priority over the last couple of weeks, especially with people realizing stuff like the Jin Zhao, stuff like the Lee Sin have a few more answers these days. So I like that ban as well. You know, that's the thing quite actually, because for the longest time, Viking has just been picking that Sin mm -hmm. out for himself. Uh, so it's fine with the respect ban and with the Hecarim, but I do feel like Viking's probably brought better and Brett and Butter so far has been this in South. So if we trade AD carries here, I think we're just going to see Nuriki go for one or the other, and then Dusty is going to be fine with an AD carry jungle rotation for okay. himself on red. I, I, I don't mind the Thrash, but of course, it's a standard pick. It, it kind of makes, makes things like the Jinx and the Athelios a little less safe. But Abagnale's, for me, it's been things like the Rakan yeah. that I would have potentially looked to ban, because I feel like FGG could have looked towards a Thresh if, the, if they wanted it anyway. So I don't hate the ban, but it wouldn't be what I would prioritize versus Abagnale. Okay, so let's see. Are we actually going to see the double AD okay. carry just being rotated in here? And it so far, it well, seemed like yes. Yeah. So Jinx picked on this side. Caitlyn is banned on blue as well. So it kind of just leaves the option of the Aphelios if we are going to go for the standard stuff. And then once again, we mentioned this in Sao, something that Viking has been really happy playing. So my uh, two cents would probably be the uh, Aphelios and the Sin Sao to come through on this rotation. Yeah. I mean, you, you could if you wanted to look something like a, like a Tom Kench, if you wanted to like pick that up, that's kind of again, be going up in priority a little bit. I mean, there's the Aphelios, no surprise there. And I wonder whether Gulborg is correct. They do look towards the jungler and look for a potential counter pick. Well, they're certainly talking like quite a bit right here because the picks are not just coming in immediately. No, it's true. Like, quite often when you're sitting in, yeah. in in this conversation, it's not only just talking about the first two picks you're currently picking because mm. they might already know that. But it's like, what do we do in three right now? Are we reserving this for this potential pick that we are expecting them to come out with? Because quite often as a team, when you're doing draft prep, you're doing it out of theory. You're doing it out of expecting them to go for a specific champion themselves. So while I think this rotation was fairly obvious. I think the discussion was about something that might come out later. Now, from the side of Nuriki, I mean, Desidia has been quite happy about the Trundle, too, to mm -hmm. just go with that into Zinzao. So maybe they are looking for a champion like that themselves. Pillar's good against the uh, the Aphelios as well, so it wouldn't be too bad. Okay. Yeah. So uh, one of our criticisms of Nuriki in earlier weeks was the mid-jungle being a little bit absent, I think, in some of the plays. Getting Desiderate onto Elysium, which is a playmaker, it's not unexpected into the Jin Zhao. It's another one of those early AD level 2, 3 junglers that can get things happening. Makes some sense. But if you are locking this in, I need to see you make something of it, either towards Azator on his infamous Jinx, or looking towards Patoshka, who I hope goes towards something like a carry, because I've always preferred him when he's on something like the GP or the Fiora, which can be a mid to late game threat. Leona locked in. Gives a lot of value yeah. to the time yeah. just to come through in this I one. Agree. That's what they're going for in this instance. But you know, I want to talk about a little bit about the Lee Sin pick as well. Because that's something in isolation against the Sin Sao that isn't actually that good. Sin mm. Sao usually runs away with that end of the stick. But now, you know, we've talked to the Cedric. He's quite confident as a person. Um, so yes, he, he has got <laughs> a lot to work on, or at least to sh showcase in this game in terms of how he makes this Lee Sin work. Because stylistically, doesn't always do too well into the Sin Sao in a jungle matchup. And it's interesting because the Gwen has been available. Nobody's actually overing the, the Gwen. I thought it was going to be like a I'll Gwen. I hate to do it to you, but it is she is Ben. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was looking to the other side. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. And they don't go for the Tom Kent as we were talking about. They're going straight up for the same lock-in champions on the bot side. Nautilus now with a great win rate so far on this league. So C Considering the way both these sports like to play, though, they do like to be more on the, on the engaged side of champions. They're less towards enchanters and the like. So I think Leona and Nautilus make a lot of sense stylistically for what these teams like out of these players and what these players have shown proficiency on or, or their, their highest highs on. So I'm kind of okay with that. It does mean that our solo laners have yet to be picked up unless someone decides to pull uh, an MS and run that fairly off mid, which I doubt. Uh, we're looking towards probably mid lane focus, at least from the bands right now. Yeah, I think the word for the supports is just definitely lockdown. Immobile AD carry, see if we can utilize that. And moving into solo laners, I mean, Backlong has been quite scary on his LeBlanc as well. It's something that we've seen a lot of team ban out against him. And uh, I'm curious to see if that's something Nuri can respect as well. Because I could imagine a team like Dusty with A-Love comfortable on a weak side 
would actually like to have it as an R5 against the like of Petoska. Make sure oh. that Dusty's top laner doesn't actually get put in a position where he can get to be aggressive with one of his finicky picks. So for Dusty right now, I think you're banning out a few bad matchup for a potential mid laner. You're going to pick on four. It's yeah. a big four mid, mid laner, save the top lane so you don't yeah. take Petoska I... as a... As a carry, a massive well, carry. I also don't hate picking up something defensive for Elefir to allow for a counter pick assassin type deal for Backland as well. Because he does like to go towards things like the Akali, though. If they want to go to that now and saying, Aero, you've not got anything into this, I completely understand it as well. They do go towards the Ari. Question then becomes, is it going to be another AD Ari? I, I mean, I hope not. So far, I, I haven't right. seen it to its full success. <laughs> I'm still very much a fan of the traditional AP Ari. Now I give it to my mirror. Full AP with like damage is way more fun to watch than yes. Everfrost. But Everfrost to me is way more fun to watch than an AD Ari at this point. <laughs> so once again, we get the matchup with Silas into Ari. Um, and it's not really, from my experience, something that does well in laning phase. It's more of an out of lane experience. Um, you also get um, a few ultimates that's great on Silas. Like it's like Sitzau, like the lockdown from a depth charge as well. And as we talked about, huh? don't necessarily want to give Petoska a winning matchup. So Petoska just going for GP, which is a safe blind, seems great. What are they going to respond with on Dusty's side, though? Absolutely. And obviously, now you've locked in the GP. We've seen what Petoska has done on that in late game scenarios. His flash kills against... Oh, I don't remember who it was now. There was anyway, a great game where he managed to flash and murder a lot of people. It was when Nuriki finally started picking up some wins. was a scary option. They do go towards Asylum for Aelip, yeah. which is... And mm. kind of, again, we're starting to see that over in the LCK and the LPL a little bit more. The Shy was on it quite recently. Um, but while you get some shove, it's still a relatively free lane for the GP, mm -hmm. and the GP can just ult towards the bot lane to get things rolling for Abs at all. That's the thing, though. But this is, like, super easy as a topsider, right? You just stack that armor. You know Jinx is going to be the biggest threat as well, so it's not going to cost you too much in the late game either in terms of itemization. Mm -hmm. And yes, you will loot out, lose out of the laning phase, but this is a different kind of approach where it's lose lane, win game, because Cyan, in terms of team fighting, the follow-up you can get with a Nautilus, with an Ari who's also dashing forward, like, you leading the charge despite your carries being a bit of mobile, long range moonlight vigil, all this stuff, like there's actually a good amount of follow up. So I think it's a nice standard composition and, and honestly a decent weak side pick to come out from Aelin who's like a master class on champions like it's this. It's a team to exhaust the other one until yeah. your AD carries just demolish everybody. On the side of Nuriki, they're not allowed to make any more mistakes. Nope. So this is do or die for them if they want to reach the playoffs. We're going to reach now the castle desk where Viperun and Jamara are waiting for the Summoner's Rift. Look at them. Yes, we are. We're right over here. It's good that they know where we are. We can see them from yeah, there. Those breaking the illusion the that we're in different rooms. Yeah. But <laughs> we've got a very, very interesting game. As they said on the desk, Nariki cannot afford any more slip ups. We've already seen from Astralis that miracles do happen. Fairy tales. Could happen. Fairy tales. I'm not sure if that was picked up on, on either of our mics, but yes. Fairy tales, they can come true. And Nariki, one of those team, teams, rather, chasing playoffs. So yes. I think and the you... team that is, if we're being realistic, and it's still a long shot. They have the highest chance. They're the ones that, if Riddle are going to lose out on this spot, it would probably be them. However, going on to the Rift, we still yet see Riddle play today, so they've still got the game in their hands. Yep. But for now, it's what Nariki could do here, up against a very staunch, dusty side who have found their way. Actually, will be fully confirmed, I believe, if they win this game. Yes. So there, this match matters for them as well. And of course, they're still contesting teams around them in that bottom half of playoff situation. Matches matter for both sides as we find our way onto the Rift. Just checking it's Electrocute on the Ari. Good stuff all round. Just, you have to make sure nowadays because, you know, some people decide to build wacky. I hit full tank Ari is actually very good. Are you thinking about TFT? Nah, I'm thinking about Grass the Undying, no. Warmog's no, first, Starex no. Gauge, you know. No, you need, listen, if you want to summon the A Dog, what you need is Leandri's Minions Boots of Ionian. What's the A Dog? Ionian Boots. Huh? What's Alex? Nymera. Why are you calling him A Dog? I just felt like it. What? Just because, <laughs> listen, don't break up the bit. You have one job. All right, we're talking about the game now. Yeah, uh, let's do that. I, I'm uh, into it. Where are we looking initially, right? What's going to yeah, be so exciting here? Like was highlighted on the desk. Yes. Realistically, it is the bottom side. However, Viking's actually starting at his blue buff, which says to me that he's likely going to be pathing away from Venza and FGG, which 
is potentially risky when it doesn't look like too much information was gained on either side. In fact, wards are mirrored on the Raptor camp. So mm. uh, there's no real say. There'll be a little bit of information given now that Venza actually walks in with an overheal shield. So hopefully that gives a little bit of indicator that, you know, he was at the very least hitting a jungle camp before he walked in uh, to the bottom lane here. And because of the leash, this just means, you know, no priority here. Typically anyway, Jinx can take priority into Aphelios in the early stages just because Venza, well, I say Venza, Aphelios starts with the Calibrum and the Severum. These mm. guns aren't really made to secure priority. Yeah. Uh, unless you're outranging your opponent, which uh, unfortunately, as a tour with the Rockets, uh, can match, it might even be outrange. I don't know the very specific numbers uh, there, but we'll see what the Sidra gets to get, uh, you know, done on the bottom side now that he should have priority down there and what Viking's early game plan exactly is with this path towards top side because he is pathing towards effectively a lane which isn't going to have priority and a side which isn't going to have priority either and actually Dusty across the board in the earliest stages of this game shouldn't have lane priority anywhere so that really should give the Sidere on this lease in a lot of freedom to actually make some plays whether they're aggressive towards lanes or whether they're aggressive directly towards Viking yet to be seen. And that's the trick, right? Even if your lanes aren't in a position to be ganked, because when you've got priority, unless you're setting up a dive, which Ooh. I've gone forward actually into this first fight, Venza needs to be a little bit careful. Will dance away, putting out damage as he goes. And McNally taking the snipe actually. Ignali's there as well. Will be hit with the heal from Azdor, so should be okay. But goodness me, that was a turnaround from Dusty and very close to first blood on both sides. Yeah, and I mean, it feels like you see this so often out of Venza and FGG lanes. You get these very close 2v2s in the early, early, early stages of the game. Uh, but I think it's Nuriki at the end of the day that end up winning out when you think about what's going to happen now because Venza and FGG, they have to catch this wave. They want a good lane state. They're going to have to try and shove out the wave. Viking's not here on the bottom side to try and make that a very quick shove. And now what's going to end up happening is Abagnale can open out onto the mid lane. He can potentially find something onto Barkland, maybe blow a flash at best. And in fact, could have the Sidere with him to do that. We'll see. Maybe the mid lane wave state allows Barkland to actually back up uh, and get a reset and be in a very safe position. Instead, Abagnale and Azatoth, they're going to actually just path directly back down to the bottom side, try and catch that wave, which uh, Venza and FGG do shove up so they can get their reset. But in the next 30 seconds now, that can give them a bit of a window to play with, uh, as FGG and Venza will now have to, on the rebounds potentially, unless a freeze gets held here, uh, deal with that wave. Just sorting out the lane state in the bottom side, as you mentioned. Let's have a little bit of talk about this top lane. Sure. Well, while we're here, while our eyes have been drawn towards it, Sion, Gulberg, some choice words about what this matchup wants to do. Why don't you just have us a little chat through what are we expecting between these two? Because top lane's a lane that we don't really talk about all that much. Yeah, no, it's definitely a lane where, well, actually, Halef gets a pretty nice trade-off uh, um, to Potoshka. You effectively, I'm not going to use the word survive. Because yeah. Gangplank, before first recall, typically doesn't have, you know, into a, into a tank matchup like Scion, doesn't always have crazy, crazy pressure. Might have to hold this point very soon as the Sidere. He's Thinking eyeing up this bottom it? side, and actually, if you take a look at the minimap, Eero is on his way here. And Viking is pathing actually upwards away from this play. Venz are going to be flashing away. So is FGG, and they're going to look to turn a bit of damage yeah. around. But Nariki committing multiple members to get two flashes. How do we feel about that? Yeah, I think it's okay for now. If they can actually make a punish of it, that's not too bad. They should have spotted each other out, Viking and Eero. And Viking is actually going to go onto the Raptor camp. They still have vision on the Sidere. But our rotation can come up here as... Toshka eating a lot Toshka. of damage. Needs to be a little careful. A One more flash draw. Force. That's a flash. Nice heal coming on through from those oranges. Yeah. No knockup available. The flash will be used in the end. Toshka trading blow for blow. Gets out alive. Yeah, gets out alive. Alif does miss a couple of minutes of XP for that, but this does mean now that Viking can come up here and punish this lane. If Toshka does play, you know, slightly over eagerly to uh, get some of these trades in. Very curious to see the grasp of the undying in this matchup. I think it makes sense, but I don't know. I'd feel like farming gold off the first strike in Taylor if you were to ask me. I, me and Jake always have this discussion mm. when uh, we see Gangplank, especially in these tank matchups. So I have to hold this point. Abagnale, not quite going to find Mark with a Hex Flash. And whilst that play is going on mid, FGG, Venzart, they're just going to leash Viking on this dragon as the wave, it looks like, was shoved in. Abagnale felt comfortable leaving Azator alone underneath that tower. And Dusty will pick up this dragon for now. But it's nice to see both these teams, in one way or another, on one side of the map or the opposite, try and be proactive in different manners. 
but yet to yield a very tangible result outside of that Infernal Dragon just picked up by Dusty. I mean, that's a small tangible result. Of course, we've got Hextrek spawning up after it, so we're likely to have a more passive dragon. In fact, we will have a more passive dragon coming in for the soul this time around, which is going to be a change for our first game where the Infernal Dragon soul was a big talking point going through. Viking spot out on the ward will just clear it out, but Thane's retreat and we'll move back in. Back to Zeb, so is the Cedar. It's gonna be a 4v3 if they go for the dive with Lee Sin in the neighborhood. It looks like they're gonna do just that. Venter tanking the first shot of the tower. A lot of damage coming up through initially, though, as Asdor dives back away. FGG oh. burning low will actually fall as well as the Cedar on the back trying to get onto Viking. Not gonna be able to trade blow for blow, but might look to follow up, getting the damage down. But Zinzal looking for the ring gauge, has to spot back with the Venter yeah. still alive, remember. And I think Lee Sin's been enough more than he could chew. Goes down solo to Viking there. Yeah. Good dive from Dusty. They lose one member because there was one more member than they thought they'd be there. So they take down three. Yeah, and I mean, we'll just get the replay straight away. Dive comes in. Venza takes an early tower shot and actually tanks an additional one on top of that. Ends up working out. And unfortunately, the Citrate didn't W as a tour on the way in. And I think that could have maybe bought the Jinx an extra auto attack of life. And maybe the focus from the Citrate, I just trying to go for the tank tanking target, uh, realistically. Uh, not playing to save Azator, and unfortunately, finds a Sonic Wave that maybe he didn't necessarily think we turned around onto him by Viking. And that's what Gorbok said, though, in the 1v1 in isolation. That's exactly what happens. Intel runs over this matchup 1v1. Uh, and we got to see a little bit of it there. As FGG looked like he was maybe looking for something towards the top side. I would kind of like to see Dusty, if nothing else can be had from the bottom side, which, granted, it probably can be. Yeah. I think with the Herald spawning up, they have the opportunity to quickly pick on Potoshka before they can maybe look at a Herald play. Uh, but it's not necessarily something that's a necessity to look at. I think Herald, though, is something they will keep their eyes on uh, as a potential prize up here. As Aleph has been more than holding his own, uh, trading pretty much blow for blow in this matchup. And doing a very damn good job of it. Venter here, gonna catch this wave underneath the tower by himself as FGG was roaming. And I think that is obviously the next big thing to look at the Herald, but Desiderate says the hell with the Herald. I'm down here for this potential bottom side dive. Eero won't have first move from the mid lane, but Barkland definitely could respond yes. if this gets drawn out. No. Cleanse is available for Venza, but there's no flash on either bottom lane here for Dusty. Not sure about this one. They're going to go in. No ultimate available for Leona. Oh and my they get a God. massive amount of damage down. Abignale will fall to the tower. 2v1. The scoreline is on the top side. Nuriki see people go down, but it's going to be Dusty. Yeah. Picking up the Richard as well. They get plays on the, box, uh, the top side at least. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, Azator's gonna get at least an additional plate, plus if we can get a look at the bottom lane, assuming nothing's happening here in the mid lane, how big is that wave that Venza just missed? Because there was a crashed wave before that, which Venza definitely didn't get to farm. Yeah. And now there's this additional wave, which was also not farmed, plus the plate's picked up. And I mean, look at the amount of burst damage. That's what I'm very curious about, because it felt like Venza, what does he eat? Chompers auto? Where's the... <laughs> it's a magic trick. And I mean, look how many chakrams that Venza had available to him. You could see it as fizzle out as he still died. If he was able to get just a couple of wars off, maybe a trade happens because Abagnale did walk out that one limping. I mean, Abagnale died, so there was a trade. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he died. But there could have been a much more effective one if yeah. that like second order attack come through because, hey, I, I still don't know where the damage came from. No. But if you're, Ooh. Aphelios can return damage very, very effectively. Abagnale trying to throw down a Zed Blade looking for FGG, wasn't able to find him this time around as we hit the 10 minute mark in this game. Remember, Rift Herald, he is in the pocket of Viking, so there is that tool that Dusty can use to invest. You know what I'm going to ask you. Where should it go? The classic where, uh, well, you know, the normal default answer is, well, you have a Phileas on the bottom side, you've got a tank on the top side. You don't care about the top lane. You don't necessarily care about the R lane. However, that mid lane tower has three and a bit plates left on it. So it's actually a tower that can very easily drop uh, to a successful Herald charge. And it seems like Dusty and Viking are eyeing up the potential of that. Mm. Or maybe just they're trying to shield Barkland as he shoves this one in. The Dragon's up in 30 seconds. They have plenty of choices, yes. really. And they still have a lot of time, over two minutes before uh, that Herald is going to drop off. Uh, so I'm expecting... Actually, I think the mid lane might be a good start, just, just to be able to knock it off the map uh, as opposed to the place. But maybe they just say, OK, default answer, Venza, he's the hyper carry on the Aphelios. We give him the gold. I mean, it's a decision that is on Viking to make with the rest of his team. Um, and I mean, he could go mid to try and cause some pressure when they go to the second dragon, Hextech Dragon. Having an Infernal and a Hextech early on, it's going to give them a little bit of an advantage. The Silver goes wide. Venza, oh, careful, um... dancing away. FGG also missing the anchor, but Viking coming on through. Call out on a ward. Backland's going to come in as well. Should be spawned out by the ward. Goes for the Stellar Step, but I think it was just inside vision there. So not going to be a surprise to anyone. 
Dusty make the response to save their marksman. And now moving back towards this mid lane, Eero might be a little overextended here. 2v1, but moving up towards the top side. No priority up there, but Viking and Backland not interested in chasing, not interested in asking the question because they've got other places to be. And it's just a slow game of rotations where neither team is really able to get much done in the top side. For Tosca, ah. when does this matchup stop being a bit rough? Well, he's got the hole breaker already. It's an item complete. I mean, look at the state of the tower. Mm. There's one plate left on it. So, Aleph has been doing very clearly a fantastic job yeah, for sure. of uh, pressuring that top side tower. I'm not sure, because we haven't had too much of a look here at what's been going on throughout the laning phase. It's one of those things where you'd have to watch the VOD of the top lane from a POV of either one of these players. Mm. But uh, yeah, Aleph, another Demolish proc. With the whole breaker, that thing's gone. So that's standing gold as far as Aleph is concerned. Whether Potoska's just been having a rough time of it or whether Aleph's been playing this one exceptionally well from the get-go. Uh, of course, had the option to pick the Scion into the Gangplank matchup. And I'll tell you firsthand, it can be a little bit unfun uh, if you don't necessarily pull out a lead individually in the earliest of stages. And that seems like what is happening here as Potoshka will do his best to clear out the wave. We still have a lot of the wave clear available, but as soon as the Demolish proc comes back up, that's all you wait for. You break that tower quite simply. And Viking ran out of time with his Herald, so just going to drop it in the mid lane for the plates. And I mean, honestly, with the Dragon already secured, they could turn this into a rotation to the top side just to make sure that tower's gone by. It looks like Potoshka's actually just going to yield it and Aleph will pick that one up free. They can't stop this Herald from charging either, so that's a lot of gold which is mm. about to go into the pockets of Dusty across the board. And they can even rotate now towards the bottom side. They've got about 40 seconds to get as many plates off this tower as possible. They can actually guard Azator and Abagnale off of this bottom side roam. Uh, and give Venza some plate time here. Yeah, three plate immediately stripped off ah. that tower. Look at the gold lead, it's just ballooned yeah. from what it was. And that is all from macro play because no one went down, of course. We saw Aleph pick up first tower in the top side. Mid lane just goes down as well, but it's Backland who secures the money there. 15 seconds on these plates. Don't think Aphelios is going to be able to get any, but look at the gold leads. Individually. Just across the board. Yeah, I mean, it's only really the bottom lane where there's complete parry. Look at the mid lane, 1.5k, the jungler's just under 1,000 top lane. Gangplank, who has parlay gold, is still 1,000 gold down because, by the looks of the top lane tower, didn't manage to pick up any plates. It's looking a little bit rough for Nariki mm. at the moment. Early stages of the game, of course, plenty left. But as we take stock, as you'd like to do at 14 minutes with those plates having come off, game is firmly in Dusty's control. However, now that laning phase has stopped a little bit, these individual leads change in terms of what that means for the game. What are we expecting moving into the mid game from Dusty? What would you like to see them do in the next five minutes? I think at the moment, Aleph is such a strong side laner. As long as they give him the opportunity to put down some pressure, I think Dusty can legitimately work off this. If they don't want to do that, and that's fine, because it's at the end of the day, a Scion who's been weak side, that's fine. If it's not that, play with Fog of War. You have an Ari, you have a Zin Zhao, you have an Aulus. Just play Fog of War. Yeah. Just create these massive sort of blots uh, on the enemy team of vision from the Ricky. I mean, even if we could get a toggle on the Ricky's vision in the top side right here, this is all darkness for the Ricky. There is not a single ward hit. So even things like this, this is absolutely terrifying to walk into. There's just no safety at all on the top side of the map for them. Bot side doesn't look much better. Teleport actually coming through from oh, Silas as a fight. Venza being chased away. Ignite is rolling. On the backside, Aleph looking to Venom though, but it's 3v1. He's tanky, but is he tanky enough? He's going to stumble out actually. Half health. Remember, he has got a passive. Neither of them coming through from Aero, but won't land onto anyone in particular. But they will be able to take Sion down, but he's going to turn and return to the fight as a bit of damage comes in from Decida. Backland gets a kill as well. Yeah. He's very curious to see how that one started. It seems like it was Nuriki just going for Venza on the bottom lane, just trying to pick him off. Obviously, the teleport comes in from Aleph to come and uh, assist as Viking, I think. Maybe he's just going to go for the counter jungle. For, looked like he was going to try and put the Herald down and go for the tower himself. But yeah, it just looks like they're just going for the dive. They have a wave there. Aleph immediately responds, but Venza with the summon spells is able to get out. Eero, however, teleports immediately in response, and the, the amount of damage that Venza returns with that Inferno moment is actually kind of scary at this moment in the game, to be honest with you, but it's not enough to keep Aleph alive. And on the back side of it all, Barkland, whilst he does pick up Leona, just eats a little bit too much CC, isn't able to really utilize the mobility of the Spirit Rush to keep himself alive to maybe be a bit more of a nuisance 
to the Nuruki members there, but I think either way, he put himself in a position where he was likely going to die, whether it came at that very moment in time or about 20 seconds after the fact, uh, as, as a talk. Back on the bottom side, they did pick up that tower and items. We were taking stock yes. before this sequence of play happened. Uh, across the board, first items are pretty much there, except for the poor old supports, as is per usual. Uh, Triforce from Potoshka and the stacking of agility cloaks. So. I believe this is going to be one of those things where we see like IE into triple agility cloak and that's the spike that we're going for. FGG should be able to get away, yeah, anchor thrown and will be able to wander out, but Dragon spawning up. This would be for Drake if Dusty can secure it. The last fight we saw though, didn't really go in their favor. So whether that's just a case of that circumstance, of course it was very split up. Yep or if it's going to be a case of them maybe not necessarily having the spikes and tools that they need, is the question that's going to be answered for us in the next couple of seconds, because you can feel like these two teams want to engage. Yeah, and the important thing is Venza lost both of Summer Spells on that one side. Die. Yes. So his positioning has to be very, very good. And you can see, look how defensive Oh, they're coming in. in. I don't know how his position is going to look, but nice stun from Abagnale on the two. FGG is completely out of the fight. Backland is dead as they're driving on through. Venza untouched for the moment as the oh. turnaround from Dusty could be big. Aphelios is firing. The re-engage from FGG doesn't come through, but Aleph might well look for it. Slow down onto Potoska, but won't be able to get the knock. Will be able to get the knock up over the wall. Oh. As Viking Viking. Goes forward, but he goes down, he beat up one two. Now Venz is overextended. Azator is so excited, picks up the double, looks for another, but it's just going to be the cleanup onto the side. Now Ricky turn it around, get themselves the dragon. Couple of mis misplays from both teams there. Yeah, I think realistically it's a bit of a mispositioning and error initially from Dusty to get themselves put in a position where they can mm. lose Barkland for free like that. But then it's just an overchase into a choke against ganked like a jinx. It, I can't think of too many champions as a pairing of top and AD where that's actually worse. Maybe if you chuck a Felios on the other side of an Infernum. Oh, but that's about it. As yeah, I mean, it's just a great engage onto FGG and eventually it just ends up meaning that Barkland eats that Solar Flare into the Everfrost and he can't move. He doesn't even cast Omo or Flash, dies in the midst of it. And then again, like we said, it's Nariki that kind of overchased into this choke. Venza transitions into the red white guns and it looks so scary, but then Dusty, what did the Ricky just do to you? Chased into a choke and kind of funneled themselves in. What do you then do yourselves? You chase into a choke. And it's kind of actually made worse by the Mountain Dragon because it turns into this kind of... It's two little yeah, chokes. It's two little chokes into an amazing Ulma from Toshka to ensure that retreat has to occur and retreat paths are entirely cut off. Massive win for Nariki though, because it was looking kind of dire in terms of if Dusty didn't chase in there, that's third dragon. And then that's five minutes away from having to deal with a mountain soul. Very, very scary for Nariki initially, but they capitalize on the overchase. And now it is going to be Dusty who have the run of play this time off the back end of it. They drop the Herald on the bottom side. And Venza is not quite going to be able to pick up this tower. Potoshka is on duty for wave clip. Really good for him. Yeah, good for him. Some gold in his pockets. And exactly. now it's Venza just being protected by Viking at FGG, playing around with vision a little bit, which is what we wanted to see from them before. But taking down that dragon has slowed things up a little bit for the Ricky. And actually, in the past few moments, it's all been about the Ricky. They're the team that's looked like the more effective team fighting yep. skirmishing comp. Exactly. And not only that, with the skirmishing, I think if you just take into consideration the scaling one-to-one. -one, yes. Right? If you ask anybody, you know, you might have some very strange thinking people that might say that Aphelios outscales Jinx. I think most people would probably want a five item Jinx on their team. Yeah, for sure. Aphelios in most cases, in this meta right now. And Gangplank should have enough value. I feel like a lot of these champions have to, from Dusty, get into his operational ranges, right? Mm. At least three out of five, because there's three melee champions. Ari has to get close enough where it's a bit of a dance between Ulma and the barrels. <laughs> and only really Venza can stay out of Gangplank's ranges for the attack for a majority of this game. So even with that, you can apply the exact same logic to Jinx just about in yes. this particular instance. And if your Aphelios is in rage of the Gangplank or the Jinx, what's he doing? Exactly. So. Things can start to look rough, rough here for Dusty. It's not a case of, you know, they had to snowball a lead. They had to get some kind of very mm. tangible, uh, you know, uh, like we said, lead to ensure that they can secure some kind of late game team fight win. But I just, 
It, to me, Nuriki's comp just scales a lot harder one to one into them. Caught up the solar flare, the damage coming down, but he's still standing. Going for the ring gauge, FGG manages to land the CC onto Abagnale. He's gonna go back, back, diving on Be forward. Good. Viking does the same, uh, looking okay, but Viking's actually gone pretty low. The damage is there, the snipe comes through, but Viking will go down to Asdor, who's now gonna get that reset. But his half elf and maybe doesn't feel like committing too heavily. That's a lot of damage coming out of that gangplank battle, half helping Venza. He's gonna step up trying to get the damage down on to the uh, gangplank, re engage. Oh my through. god. But I don't know about that one, Chief. He's going to go low. Cut down by Aleph on the Scion. Nuriki, maybe a little bit too eager to get the re-engage going, but will go again under tower. But they might lose Viking. He has to go gone. They're going to lose members. They're not taking down the objective uh, as Dusty just fade back after their tower. Why, Dusty? Why? It's definitely an overstep. I just don't think it's going to cost them anything, but what it costs them is the opportunity to push their lead. Yes. So, Unfortunately, like you call out, why Dusty? Why? What's the need for this this over aggression underneath this tier one? Well, I, mean, I can't think of a reasonable. Nuriki <laughs> go aggressive, and then Dusty are like, oh, we'll have some oh, of that. Yeah. They go in as well. <laughs> and I mean, at the end, actually, to be fair, it was yeah. maybe Nuriki who made Nuriki were the culprits. Yeah. But Alev definitely signed up for what they were doing. <laughs> definitely. And let's get a look at this replay. It starts with FGG, I believe, hooking Abagnale, or Abagnale actually going over the wood hero here, uh, and the turnaround. Mm from uh, Dusty looks kind of good, but then eventually it just feels like there's no real, I don't know, consistent damage onto a, on a meaningful target. And as soon again, it's almost, it's a pretty big choke to be fair, this top rush, but that Gangplank Ulmer just stops Viking mm. pretty much dead in his tracks. And look at, look at Potoshke, and I want you to track him for the remainder of this fight. Okay. Because some of the barrels of damage that he puts down, especially underneath the tower actually, it's quite scary as Azator as well. Look at that, 262 onto the, some of these champions uh, pre Infinity Edge. Just consistently getting all these damage, uh, all this damage in to some of these carries when it matters the most. As yeah, Dusty, why is anyone there? Why is anyone here? Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a good question. As at first, Nuriki definitely go a little bit over eager to yes. try and find somebody underneath the tower. Admittedly, it's definitely their territory. As Dusty, we come out of the replay. It seems like this is their dragon. I don't think. I think it should be. Uh, Nuriki have given it up. They're yeah. going to be moving back towards this mid lane as this wall will set up for Soul Point in five minutes' time for Dusty. And when you've got Nautilus and Sion and the Zins now as well to an extent, you've got tools that are going to be hard to break down already. If you give that additional shield and those resistances, how much is that going to help Dusty in team fights? It's going to give them a noticeable edge. That's definitely for sure. Especially when you think about, you know, Alif. Eventually, there comes a point where Sion doesn't really need to build items that give him health because obviously Sion, with the Soul uh, Furnace passive, he gets all of that innate HP. You can just start building more stats and obviously that's a multiplier on the Mountain Dragon mm. uh, itself and it just starts to feel quite bad uh, to have to deal with. But Azatort, already building toward that Lord, Do uh, Lord Dominic and Potoshka has it in his inventory already uh, with the uh, fact that the barrels also penetrate, uh, I think, what is it, 30% ignore, I think, at base. and. I think audio cue was whole buses on already, so that's the true damage uh, portion of Gangplank's armor picked up. Mm -hmm. Which is definitely going to help cut through uh, additionally a little bit more. Some of the front line that Dusty have available to them, but giving over that dragon, three and a half minutes now, a little bit more than that, from the Ricky to put themselves in a position where they can respond, where they have to be, I think, realistically, in front of the objective. I, I think if they're not in front of the objective first here, yeah. this team fight is going to absolutely suck for them. Let's talk about Baramut very quickly, because it's not something that we've particularly mentioned. Both of these team compositions, I like discussing it, because some comps can do, some comps can't. Obviously, Aphelios and Jinx are both very effective at breaking it down. Is there a world where either of these teams could look to sneak a Baron, or does a play have to happen first? I think it can happen, but it has to be so sneaky. You have to you have to clear out vision and really it has to be like I'm not sure if you saw the clip of T1 the other day when they snuck that Baron in the LCK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna have to be something it's like that level or above. Yeah, because Gangplank can always check with his ultimate. There's three blue wards on the side of Nariki. So Dusty, the opportunity to do it is always gonna be quite slim. And as for Nariki, things can always be checked. There's only one blue ward, admittedly, but uh, it's still going to be quite hard, I'd have to say, for Nariki themselves to sneak this away. But they do have a lot of damage, right? Between that Gangplank and between mm. that Jinx, they will cut through that Baron with relative I mean, ease Silas if they have do the time. Bad damage to it either. Yeah, and I think also the other very key thing to 
pretty much track is Venza's guns because yeah, Venza, Chakram, it's how you burst through the Baron and he's going to actually uh, cycle through uh, the Severum over to the Calibrum, red to green, so now he's got the Sniper uh, and the Chakram is a very powerful combination when Again, you have to be playing at range in these team fights. If he can somehow hold on to as much ammo as possible for the next two minutes, it's a pretty, it's a pretty difficult ask. I was gonna say, Venza, don't participate in the game. Go to base. Don't right click. Just go to base, and in a minute and a half, I, I walk think, to Baron. I think for this particular game, he has the best combo of guns he could use for the dragon fight in about a minute and 50 seconds. And this is the thing, how quickly does Aphelios rotate through guns? Well, he's already two fifths of the way through Calibrum. So, quite quickly. <laughs> is the case if, he, if he's right clicking and casting spells, it can. Is there a world where he wants to rotate all the way through in this time? No, too many guns. Too many. So guns. he can't do that. So realistically, uh, reasonably, yes. Uh, no, I I'm not sure what's on the menu next though. I think it's I think it's purple gun. Gravitum. Yeah, I think it's gravitum now. It will be Gravitum and then it will be Infernum. So he's trying to cycle through all the other way around. Yeah. So he's, he's got Gravitum now. Through, but now he has to get rid of Chakrams because Chakram plus Gravitum, it kind of sucks. It's the worst gun combo. Right. I'm sorry for those at home who have to sit here and listen to me talk about Felios guns. I know it's not exactly the most uh, enthralling commentary in the world, but. I mean, there, there will be a Felios. There's probably an Aphelios main in chat. Hey, <laughs> you're, you're awful. Second off. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't get it. The champ has too many things going on. Doesn't even Play matter. it. You'd be surprised. It's not that complicated. I Yeah, you've you've met me. So. <laughs> that's true. But uh, hopefully... What do you mean that's true? Hold up. Listen, 30 seconds left. I'll have this argument with you later. He's actually trying to hold on to Chakrams. He's trying to cycle through everything. You're right. That is actually what I think he's going for. Is he's he going to have enough time? Empty. Are they going to be able to play for time, though? Because I mean, so are moving into I think river. what comes here, though, is Infernum. So maybe he's looking for an Infernum moment, and then maybe he can cycle for Infernum again and then get Char uh, get Severum. It's it's a big ask, but it can certainly happen. And so might be engaged on here as Eero's yeah. going forward. Nice use of the Everfrost, but needs to be so careful. Back on Flash Ooh. going forward. Eero's so healthy. Looking for the Got assassination. It. We'll find it. Solo kill. Nariki are now going to make this play 4v5. Yeah. And they're moving Dusty, forward. They're nice charge though. Dusty's trying to get the engage immediately before Eric. The they managed to get the jinx before he returns. But now he's looking towards Viking. Won't be able to find him. Venza is free firing untouched. Aleph moving up the side. Look at the CJ. Look at Abagnale though. Dusty are interested in taking down these two members, catching anyone they can. And they will find Leona. She is dead. And just like that, Dusty, they take the pick. They lose the member. But then they dominate the team fight, and who cares what guns he has? Venza is just going to move down and help take out this dragon. And what amazing second by second decision making from Dusty. Wait, wait, wait. The bot lane, they went up towards mid lane. Aaron needs to be careful. The Cedra is there as well. It's a 2v4, but okay, so right. a little bit too over eager. Now Venza is here. Now FGG's yeah. here. And now the soul can be secured. Yeah. And what amazing split second decision making from Dusty mm. there. Because they recognize, okay, we're at a numbers disadvantage, but. Silas is still in our jungle. If we push forward now onto the four as a four, it's an equal fight. It's equal numbers, and Eero won't be able to actually have any say in this fight. He already cast his armor to make sure he could get that solo kill, plus the flash anyway. Only really working with his regular spells. Amazing stuff from FUG and the rest of Dusty to recognize that is the position that they were in, and to immediately try and punish Nuriki for trying to come and save their mid laner. And now Dusty, they're looking and they do for this Baron. Baron. They Probably have an idea it's going on. We'll catch Aleph in the bush, trying to get some damage down. Dusty gonna peel away. They want to take the fight under Abagnale. They find him. Astor has to flash over the wall. The Leona is forfeit. As Dusty will move forward. Oh. Back missing the Charmer. That could be big and it's gonna be executed dead. Astor gets the reset, but needs to be careful. Nice re-engage from FGG as they catch on to two Hero? Silas. Eros goes low, goes golden. As Astor trying to keep the Silas alive, trying to cut off any route for re-engagement, but FGG does oh, not care. Cedar goes into the will be blown up. Azator, he's resetting, he's free firing, he's getting the damage he's down. Got it. Finally gets towards him, but the zap's slow. But Tosca in the front line, it's 2v2. Can Astor survive? Goes That's golden, not what? but Sion's going to come back to life. Looking toward Azator, Run. running for dear life. Don't look back as a tool just run as Sion does go down Nuriki win the fight but Baron isn't taken Baron isn't taken the Ricky they want their playoff chance they are not gonna go silently into the night with this one they don't want to just give it over to Dusty Dusty they're doing such a good job at these small integral moments but time and time again Nuriki just say no we are gonna come back into each and every single fight 
and it just starts off here. Aleph is trying to play bodyguard. Dusty, they make the decision to turn off the Baron, and initially it's a great one, but it's Barkland that oversteps. He goes for yes. Azator, he sees red, he sees just taking the game off the back of that pick. And unfortunately, that means that he's dropped and it goes back towards a 4v4 hero. It looks really deep, it does, honestly. But look at the space he's buying for Azator to get all of these all attacks off. He's finding all of the AoE and that's all it really takes. The barrel comes in, doesn't really get, uh, get to find any damage. But again, it's all about Jinx. It's all about buying her, her the opportunity to find all of these free all attacks, the reset, and that's the difference maker. The stopwatch is great to ensure that there's no knock up and no death. And it's scary for a moment. Aleph, I feel like those chompers should have primed. But uh, yeah, don't look back. Azator runs out of that one. It should have infinity yet. Four items, oh my God. Four items available for Jinx now. And that's why we're seeing a pump up so much damage. Has the zeal in the inventory as well. Already looking towards five items. I mean, we're 32 minutes into the game. It makes sense, but my goodness, lost track of how fed this Jinx really is. And this is a play as at all. We always come back to saying, yeah. Ricky haven't had the best split. This guy has had a really good And it's split. always on Jinx. Well, you know, sometimes... How does he keep getting away with having Jinx so far into the season? It just feels a bit... It just... It's criminal. <laughs> and the champ against as come Yeah. On. Come on, Dusty. But Dusty aren't out of this one no. yet. They've still got control of the Baron area. They're going to start it up. Members are going to come in from Nariki. But Abagnale is a good distance away. If they want to go in without their Leona, they're going to have to pull the trigger because... There's the ultimate coming in from Gangplank. They want to get a bit of damage down as much as they can. Aleph trying to catch people out, can't do so. And Dusty are going to be forced to back away from Ooh. the Baron. Viking's super low there. Everyone on the back line has the depth charge. Oh, nice oh, oh, oh. But he's going to resurrect, remember. Sentry so turrets. Else get back up. Well, the Sentry turrets, they're not going to do anything. But it looks like Nariki just need to hold off their advance as they move into the mid lane to try and get this inner tower, which should be free. Yeah, I mean, sure. But that's also a pretty big resource for Vikings to lose. At, yeah. For pretty much nothing, right? Uh, Losing the GA in this kind of moment, especially when the Elder Dragon spawns in two minutes' time, that GA resurrection could actually be kind of key because Viking is playing the front line. He is playing the Disruptor here for Dusty. Mm. And without that revive, it could be a little bit harder uh, to do that. We'll see whether or not it actually has a real impact or not. But great job again from the Ricky to, you know, effectively stop this Baron uh, from happening. Dusty, though, they have firm control over this area of the map and thank you observers you toggle the vision exactly as i wanted to ask for it and now they still Heroes get the vision yeah they want to take this fight they want to be doing what they did last time around but dusty are okay, so FGG's close to on the the baron. what's he looking for where's the ult from azator he's not gonna be able to throw it in time his baron is secured to cedra might be a little bit too far forward gets the flash but Azator has been hit by the dredge line so he's not gonna be involved in any of the it. fight moving forward needs to be careful Lee Sin diving out as the slows come through dusty this time around is the only team to take the kill it's just Potoska oh. who might not be the most crucial member but his wave clip is good with the barrels and now dusty looking for the reset this baron buff is gonna overlap with the elder dragon yeah and with the soul in pocket as well i mean it, it just feels so hard for Nariki, but they've been fighting tooth and nail <laughs> right to make sure that they can give themselves this shot next week to ensure that they can try and make them a run for playoffs here i think they still have the tools available right they've got the four am gangplank gangplank should have flashback up as a tour crucially will have flashback up Actually, Observers, can we get a toggle on the gold? Because I think Azator should be close. No, ah, he's not going to make it to that fifth iron mark, unfortunately. How much does he need? Uh, 600 more gold, if he wants the cheapest available. Uh, yeah, that's it. All right, let's go back to the items, because I think that's the important thing to track now. Re relative parity across the board in the mid lane. The AD carries, that's where the big discrepancy is. The top side of the map, it's about even when you're talking about efficiency. Junglers, there's actually an entire extra item on Viking two items, actually. So, you know, Dusty's frontline, incredibly powerful. It's all about Azator again mm. in this late game stage from the Ricky. They have to keep him safe. They have to ensure that there's no broken up fight. They have to try and, to the best of their ability, with a much weaker frontline, play front to back so Jinx can actually layer in this damage. And Patoshka, I'm looking at you oh, to try this... and find some barrel chains mm. to try and provide some space for your Jinx as well. Because right now, Dusty's frontline is so, so tanky, but look at Hero. Nariki have bounties right now. They can get big swings. And the game state feels much closer than it maybe is. Yeah. 
So if they can get themselves this Elder Dragon with the bounty as well, big swig. Astor picks up item number five. That could be curtains for Dusty, but they're already oh, they're taking the Elder it so Dragon. Quickly. It's going really, really fast. Venza shooting through it as Reengage comes through. Nuriki wanting to contest. Backland diving away from the Solar Flare as Abagnale oh. goes on through. Viking is there. The damage is big as Venza starts ripping through the Vitus. He's trying to kick members away, but it's Dusty running through Nuriki. They had us in the first half, but now Eero having to flash over the wall. Not going to be able to get away too far as FGG follows through, but it really doesn't matter. They're going for the Elder Dragon. They're going for the Teleport. Oh. They're going to take down the enemy team to the bot lane with the Baron, the Elder Buff, the Aphelios. It looked okay for Nariki, but Dusty looking to make big inroads. And it looks like it might just be heartbreak for the Nariki players, for the staff, for the organization here. Petoshka's going to drop. Dusty, they're going to close this one out. It was so close to making this one work. We saw Astralis do it to JDXL. It looked like it might be the same story, but this time around, it's Dusty who punched their tickets to playoffs, and they can look forward to the last week. Now, Ricky left wanting. Left wanting, and now a little more out of their hands, Ricky, because all Riddle have to do now is win. is win. If they win their next game, that's it. Just they win. Locked in playoffs. And it does feel bad, I think, for Nuriki in this it kind does. of game because it was so close, because they fought so hard. And it felt like Dusty, you know, they were making mistakes at these kind of moments that allowed Nuriki to really get some big punishes. But again, it was about those dragons that started to come in. Elder eventually came into effect. It's just really unfortunate. And now they're going to sit in pain, probably watching Riddle play against Vanir. That's going to be our next game. It's a must watch for everyone, Nariki especially, but of course for you as well at home. But we're going to be talking to both of these teams very shortly. So don't go anywhere. We'll see you after the break.
Welcome back to the NLC after this amazing fight between Nuriki versus Dusty. Dusty taking the win on this one. It was a bloodbath, just as we told you all. Nuriki fighting for the all to reach those playoffs, but it was just not enough. Dusty are secured in playoffs. So it is time to talk with Zen from Dusty, the coach. Welcome. Hello, hello. <laughs> Hello, okay. Welcome to the playoffs as well. It means a lot for Dusty. What it, does it mean to you? Well, uh, we always, at, at least at the beginning of the split, uh, sort of operating under the idea that we're going to make playoffs 100%. But the beginning of the split, as everybody knows, didn't go so well. But honestly, it kind of repeated like that for a lot of our players. Most of the teams we've been on, at least at the very beginning, didn't do so well. But as the split went on, we sort of got better and better in playing it with each other. And then, you know, hopefully we, we scale to late game and in playoffs we take it all. One thing that I want to ask is about FGG performance lately. This guy has been popping off as a support. Everybody, every eyes is on FGG. Was this player performing like this on scrims or is this like an awakening uh, arc for the FGG? <laughs> well, I, I do think that FGG is a very promising rookie player. I do think that uh, we're going to be seeing this guy uh, very high up in either National Leagues or maybe even LEC one day. Um, in terms of scrim performance, I would say that all of our players have been a little bit mixed. We've all been a little bit mixed, honestly. Some days have been going very well, some days have not been going so great, to be <laughs> honest. Um, but as long as the players perform when it matters, right, on tournament games and so far, you know, we have our we have our ups, ups and downs. Some games are going a bit better, some games are going a little bit worse. <laughs> um, but at least so far, the team has been getting better with FGG on board, right? Obviously, he's been, he's been a big part of our wins recently. But I would say that every single player on our team has had these highlight moments over the course of the split where they really carried the team over the finish line. So I do think that while FG does recently at least stand out because he's more on these flashy champions, these mm -hmm. rails, Nautiluses, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, I think that when anybody on the team that's put on on a playmaking champion can make stuff happen. Yeah, and it, it seems like the way you guys are playing, this is why you locked in the playoffs so soon as well. I want to ask you about where do you see yourself in playoffs? Who would you want to fight versus? And where do you think you're going to reach? Oh, well, <laughs> I, 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 I kind of have this idea that we're probably going to have to go through absolutely every team. Mm. Um, I mean, I think that running through the gauntlet is honestly slightly underrated. So even though you have to play more best of fives, if you're a good team, you will win in the end, right? You will mm. make it to the finals and you will win. And honestly, in, during, in, in those situations, the more best of fives you actually play, usually it is better. Your players are more played in, there's a new patch, you have a better read on the meta, et cetera, et cetera. So I do think that you know we might have to go through a little bit more games, but I think that's going to be good for us. And obviously, you know, we, we all want to beat X7, we all want to beat XL. Um, and I think that if on the day we're good, I think if we continue improving and if we play if we play well on the day, I think we, we it will be a fun best of five to watch. But I do think that we have a, a good chance to take it if we're on top of our game. That sentence keeps appearing like if we're on a good day, Dusty can win versus everybody. Well, you've shown this, this so far, so I'm really excited to see the playoffs. Thank you so much for the interview, man. It's a pleasure to meet you and I'll see you soon. Thank you very much. <laughs> See ya. There you go, Dusty locking themselves in playoffs. And if they're on a good day, they can beat everyone in the league. On the other side, though, on the bad day, Nuriki, this is a bad day for them. I uh, was told by the production that they're, they cannot go anywhere into playoffs right now. Uh, I still have to, to make like one... I need to confirm something, but I believe that uh, Nuriki are now out of the run. And this obviously, it is really rough. I want to make this uh, interview a little bit shorter so the player can go and uh, take a breather and rest a little bit. I have Petoska with me, who played GP on this game. Obviously, this is going to be tough, and I'm going to make this really short so you can rest after this one. So looking into this game to begin with, GP versus Sign. Is this a good matchup or slowly an insidious death for GP? I mean, it's all right. I think it really depends on how the early game goes. And I think maybe I could have done more in the matchup, but I maybe played a little bit too scared. I respected enemy jungle a lot, so I didn't do anything too uh, insane in lane because I thought if we survive, we're chilling. But yeah. That's something that I wanted to talk about the idea that I saw you play Monday with Fiora. You were 
<laughs> one of those games that you can just put on your mind and recall every single time you hear the word Petoska. And I felt like the team was a little bit scared today. Was this because of how valuable was this game to you guys? Uh, was it because you guys were playing versus Dusty? Or just the heavy burden of looking into the, if we lose, we are out of the, the playoffs? I mean, I can't talk for the others. I think for me, it was, uh, well, I don't know actually, but mm -hmm. I guess I guess it was the game being important, but it's not like the last one wasn't as well, so. Yes. <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, last game was just weird. <laughs> it was. Okay, I'll give you the, this last one and I'll let you go after this. It uh, Obviously, now it's a tough time for Nuriki, a team that didn't start well but showed a lot of improvement. Every single player on your team shined throughout the, the split. You had times for each individual. What does this mean for Nuriki from now on? Are you guys looking into the next split? Are you looking for a little bit of a break? Or uh, are you still confident that you can show everybody what Nuriki is about? I mean, I don't know. We haven't really decided yet. I guess we'll... Uh, I mean, for the rest of the split, I think our plan is probably to be as annoying as possible to beat. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, what comes after the split, I'm not sure. I guess we'll talk about it later. Yes. Makes sense. Petoska, it was a pleasure to have you with me on the interview. Obviously, you'll need a little bit of time, but uh, it's always a pleasure to see you play, and I hope I can get to see you more and more, and I'll see you in the future, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Always. Obviously, it's a tough time for Nuriki, uh, being removed out of the, the playoffs uh, after this defeat versus uh, Dusty. But now, without further delay, I'm going to toss it to a break before because after this, we have the game of the week. It is going to be Vanir versus Riddle. Riddle cannot lose as well, or else they might be gone. Who knows what the future holds? Well, we'll tell it all about it after this break. I'll see you soon.